Ella Powell has a habit of writing and recording truly lovely songs, including the singles Along the Way, Country Love and Paper Town. She's now collecting these singles as an EP at the end of the beginning to mark this creative part of her life. So we're going to have a chat about that decision and the EP. Hello, Ella. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And as ever a fan of your music because you just do make these lovely, lovely songs. Um, so the EP is called The End of the Beginning, although in many ways I don't think you've ever sounded like a beginning artist, if that makes sense, because the songs are always so good. But as you look back at the music you've made in this beginning phase, what are you most proud of? Yeah, I I love that all my songs, they, they do tell a story. They're all from personal experiences. Um, and I've sort of been able to draw on my early life, you know, in my teen years, because all these songs were written in my teenage years um, and all by myself as well, all the ones I've released so far. So I think, yeah, the storytelling I've, I've really, I've really loved. Mm -hmm. And that decision to write by yourself, because in country music, there's a lot of co-writing that goes on. Is that that's just what obviously felt right for you? Yeah, I've like collaborated heaps now. Like I, I do so many collaborations. Um, but I think when I was starting out and releasing these songs, it took me a little while to kind of gain the confidence, I guess, to to do collaborations and just freely throw my ideas out there. So I think that's a bit of a process of maturing as well. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you say that it took you a while to get the confidence to collaborate because some people would say it the other way. It's like they don't, you know, if they're not feeling confident, they don't want to, they don't want to be exposed just on their own as a songwriter. Yeah, yeah. I guess it could go both ways, really, kind of. Yeah. So what have you enjoyed about collaborating then? I think it's just fun. You just throw ideas out. And it's just with so many people, it's just you know, non-judgmental, throw it out there, see what sticks and just bouncing ideas off because, you know, the way someone else looks at it is totally different to the way you do. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been in recent, you know, writing sessions lately where someone will just say something totally different. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, that's amazing. And it just takes something down a whole new path. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's just awesome. You know, it's not things you would think about necessarily by yourself. Are you still doing any writing on your own though? Yes, heaps. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so building a body of work, which you've always done, you've always loved writing songs. Um, and so do you know how many you have tucked away? Oh, probably, probably not as many as some other people because I tend to hold on to songs maybe a little bit too long sometimes yeah. and work them maybe sometimes even too much. And I think that's a process I'm trying to learn is when to just go, okay, this is done, move on. Mm -hmm. So I've probably got a couple hundred, but you could speak to some people that probably have a couple thousand. Oh, right. <laughs> so it's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. But, you know, only released, you know, the ones I'm really, really proud of. So the other ones are just sitting back there hanging out yeah yeah chilling it's interesting that idea of overworking though because it happens yeah, it can happen in prose writing and it's I think it stems from that belief that well it could be that you think there's always always a bit more that can be done or just also going past the point where perhaps you you disconnect from what sparked the song in the first place yeah it's it's hard isn't it to know like when to call it a day and when to go okay because, you know, sometimes if you overwork something, you lose its original spark. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm recording. I'm back in the studio on Wednesday and I'm kind of like that at the moment. I'm going through just my my lyrics all done and I'm like, oh, you know, should I change this, change that? But then you've just got to, you know, I think you've got to draw a line sometimes. Mm, sometimes it's 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 good to be able to sense when something is cooked and then not overcook it. But it's, but it's a hard barometer because it's not are, easy. Yeah. It's, there are many things that can tell you uh, that your instinct is perhaps wrong, even if it's not wrong. I think there are a lot of messages that artists can get about how they should do things. Oh, 100%. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and you are an independent artist and independent artists have to figure things out largely on their own. So when you were beginning to release music, which happened in 2020, how did you even start to work out what it was that you needed to do? Yeah, great question. Um, <laughs> I think 
Well, I I have a really, you know, amazing team behind me. I've got Stuart Coop as my my publicist, um, and then I've got Matt Fell and Shay Nicholson as my producers as well. Um, and a great um, you know, artist creative team on the side too. So I think, you know, I started to look at what other people were doing, how it all works. You know, when I first did my very first song, I don't think I even knew how a pre-save link worked or, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And I think kind of taking little bits of inspiration from what, you know, all the greats were doing. And um, I kind of then learned lots of research, lots and lots of research, I kind of just winged it. I've kind of feel like that's what I've been doing this whole time, really, <laughs> just winging it. Yeah, because I guess, you know, there are courses you can do, but of course, when you want to just start making music, um, it's not necessarily something that's going to fit into your life to set time aside to study, um, to go and do a diploma or a degree or even an online course. Sometimes you just don't have time. Yeah, all the money. <laughs> all the, all the yeah. money. yeah, there is that as well. What do you think has been the hardest lesson to learn as an emerging artist? I'm hitting you with the hard questions. Yeah, so. no, I love this. Um. I think comparison, I think, you know, don't, don't compare yourself. And I think that's something I've, I've learned, like, it sounds cliche, but everyone does, no matter where you are in life, what stage, what level, everyone compares themselves to, you know, the people above them, you know, the people that you want to be like. And I guess it's just been a really important lesson of remembering everything comes in different times for everyone. And also I think social media can make things look very different to what things actually are. So I think it's about just keeping that realistic perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, and also I would imagine when you can see people getting on playlists and things like that, and playlists are such a thing now is that you can, it's so easy to compare, right? Oh, that person's on the playlist. I am not. Yeah. And it's, it's so easy to do that. And I know everyone is a culprit of it, but it's just, I think as I've gotten older, I just realized, you know, it, it, like in the great scheme of things it doesn't matter to you and what you're doing yeah which does require that it requires you to hold your nerve to think well I'm making the art I want to make um but that can be hard to especially when you're starting out so do you think that as you've as you started releasing music that's just something that you instinctually knew you had to do because your songs are really strong and then I would imagine there was a time when you might have lost your nerve and thought I don't how do I know what I'm doing so how do you actually hold it through that process yeah, it's it's not an easy thing, especially, you know, you hear some people talking about how, you know, you've got that commercial radio vibe that a lot like people try to write for or this or this or you're trying to write for a specific playlist. And it's it, it can be hard to just hold your own and go, okay, I'm releasing the art I want to make. And I think that's why I've been so particular about the singles I've been releasing because, yeah, like, you know, I've probably compared to some I haven't released in huge volume, but, you know, the songs that I do release, I hold really close because I know they're my best work. And and that's like this year, you know, I've been working on so many songs, um, but it just hasn't felt completely right. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very big believer on on gut instincts. And I think if you follow that, then you can't really go too wrong. Yeah. I absolutely believe in that as well. Um, is there anything you wish you hadn't had to learn through the process of, of starting to make music? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's a that's a good one. Um, look, I love every aspect of it. I think the hardest part is realizing probably the real importance of social media, especially TikTok. Interesting. I think as an artist, that is really hard, and I wish it wasn't always centered around that. I wish it was just about the music. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably something that younger me didn't really think about. And I guess as you get older, you kind of become a bit more, you know, real, you, things are more realistic. You know, you've kind of realized the m amount of work you have to do as an independent artist as well. Um, but I, I still love it. It's just, <laughs> it's just a lot of different hats, isn't it? Yeah, and it's also again, there's there's no, oh, there are so there are social media marketing courses and things you can do. But again, when you're in the moment and you're trying to promote your song, you're really not going to stop and think, okay, well I'll now I will now put aside time and do this course and delay releasing this song that I've been working on. And each social media platform requires a different sensibility. And you just mentioned TikTok, which which is great for musicians, but 
that's content creation and that's and you're making music which is not the same thing I know and it's it's again it's one of those other hats and I think that's something it's very niche isn't it like I have some friends in who do marketing and stuff and they're like it's just such a niche thing you have to be the right time posting the right things and it's so funny because I'll sometimes you know scroll through TikTok and I'll see like a pig has five million likes and I'm like (laughs) come on yes it's a cute pig like cuddling a dog or something but like seriously yeah Yeah, and also I don't want to be the pig that gets five million likes (laughs) no no but it just makes me laugh because some of the things that I just see you know just blow up it's like really yeah then you can also go to that that account and see that they don't have that many followers so it's like okay Yeah. yeah doesn't doesn't correlate and I think for an artist, the the followers are the thing. I guess you're trying to to get is that people who will who will follow you regularly so that they can find out what you're releasing next. But it is uh, it, I think everything changes so quickly in that landscape. And as an independent artist, yes, you have to be across all of it. Although I have to say, I don't know that if you had anyone else doing it for you, there would be uh, there would be any better than the artists are at knowing themselves, particularly like you, and you've got a strong sense of of who you are as an artist. Yeah, totally. Like, yeah, no one knows you better, you know, than yourself and and what you want in your artistic direction. So yeah, it's definitely good coming from the artist. I think it just, yeah, it's just that extra workload really, isn't it? When everything's about volume of content as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also not the case. I would imagine that you want to put songs on there, even if you're just playing acoustic versions of unreleased songs, you don't necessarily want to put that out as your content because you may want to release that later. And exactly. It- there are so many things to think about on that. And also like, it takes time. Like I don't want to be standing in front of my phone doing TikToks, you know, <laughs> for three days out of the week, you know, yeah, <laughs> like, because you'd rather be playing music. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What I signed up for, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> so you mentioned that you're heading into the studio shortly. Do you enjoy the recording process? I love it. I absolutely love it. And especially over the years, you know, when I really, when I first started out, I found it, I was always a bit nervous and found it a bit stressful, but now I've really grown into what I'm doing and really, I've always believed in it, believed in what I'm doing, but I think now, you know, I'm writing the best songs I have so far. So that makes it so much more exciting as well. When you're 100% just know that it's the right song. Does your producer, whether it's Shane or Matt, have a say in what you're going to record? Yeah, I think they are just absolutely geniuses. Like I will send a bunch of demos to them, to Stuart. I will play them to my friends. I will play them to my parents and be like, like, what, like, you know, what, what do you think? Because at the end of the day, it is all about the listener. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, they like Matt and Shane have given me so much direction and Stuart, which has just been amazing. But the one I think I'm going to record is always the one that they say anyway. So again, it's that gut feeling, okay, you know? Right. Interesting. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. It's nice it's for really reassurance fun. though. <laughs> yeah. Look, it is absolutely. But it's also that indefinable thing of, of what you're hearing in a song, what anyone's hearing in a song that they connect with. I think if you tried to point to it, you couldn't necessarily you just hmm. know that you really like it when you hear it. 100%. Yeah. So this EP, as I said, marks, and as you said, marks a new phase for you. I'm wondering, out of that stash of 200 songs that you have, are you feeling like some of them you need to draw a line under and just say, well, that's that's actually past me and I'm now, I'm now embracing a different phase? Yeah, 100%. And I think... Um... I think it's more also like it's both personal and and musical as well. I think, you know, I was really unwell those few years ago, as you would probably remember. And I think overcoming that and recovering from that and I guess getting out of high school and going into the world, I think it's a whole holistic thing, not just in my music. I think me as a person as well. So some of those songs I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, they're good, but they're just not where I'm at now and I've been working so hard on an image and a branding that you may be able to see like through my new website and those kind of things that I'm really starting to build on and those songs just don't really reflect that now Mm -hmm. um like the part the ones I've released I feel reflect the era I was in Mm -hmm. but I'm kind of ready for for something a bit different now yeah but out of those ones you've released which will go on the EP is there one song that's closer to your heart than others 
Behind the Glass um, took me two years to write. Okay. Uh, and that was because I wrote that firstly from hospital when I was uh, 15 and really unwell. And going through that such a hard time and, and those few years of recovery from what happened and then kind of trying to write this song, it kind of grew with me. So it's not my favourite to listen to, um, mm -hmm. but it's probably the one I hold closest to my heart. And I think along the way is probably my favourite to listen to. Right. And I would imagine given the the story of writing behind the glass, it's it, it would be fraught for you to listen to it. The, the, it obviously would bring up a, a whole lot of experiences because it took mm -hmm. a while as well, but how it's, where, where it started, how it started, and then taking you all the way through that. So I guess that's a push and pull of, of being an artist is that, yes, there could be something that represents you so much but it is very hard to listen to. Oh, yeah, it can be hard being vulnerable and, you know, putting yourself out there. And that was definitely harder during high school. And I think a lot of artists would probably agree, you know, when you're younger, you're still, I, I was never completely worried about it, but, you know, you are still thinking about what your peers think about you and that kind of thing. But I couldn't care less now. <laughs> and I think that shows in the music I'm releasing because I'm just doing exactly what I want. Um, I do love that because you're still a young woman that you have arrived at this at this age because it takes some of us many, many years to arrive <laughs> at of not caring. But do you think that the experience of being a performer actually and having to get up in front of other people has helped you develop that? It's like Because if you were paralysed by concern about other people's opinions, you would never be able to get on stage. Definitely not. You know, it's, you know, everyone will always have something to say regardless of what you do. Um and I think that's something I've really realized growing up. And, you know, I grew up, I started doing theater when I was like eight, nine years old, you know, in, in all those costumes and doing weird and wonderful things. So I think starting from there, it kind of, it, it does build a bit of confidence to then, you know, just have me on a stage. It's, it's a bit easier than, you know, the wacky, wonderful theater world I was in. Yeah. <laughs> So you started releasing songs in 2020 um, and you know, interesting year for people to release music, obviously. <laughs> but um, as a songwriter, do you think your intentions have changed in that time in terms of what you want to achieve with your songs? Oh, I'm loving these questions. They're, very, they're things I haven't thought about in a while. Um, um, I think so the intention is always to stay true to myself and I think I always have been um but I think sometimes I'm starting to think more about you know the listener and what I want people to take away from it rather than just writing for myself mm -hmm. um because you know at the end of the day it is the listeners that you know keep your career going mm -hmm. and support you and I guess it's also that line that we were talking about of not overdoing it you know knowing when it will connect and when that's enough mm -hmm. I suppose also it's something that that's organically developed for you as an artist because when you were first releasing singles you you hadn't been playing them to an audience so there wasn't that sense of connection now you've been playing enough shows that I would imagine you're starting to have a sense of who your audience is and and what they want from you and what they need from you and that then changes your responsibility as an artist as well 100 percent. I think you know especially this year has been a big year of live shows for me and you know the more people that are sort of jumping on board and and you know checking out what I'm doing and following that, you definitely feel more of a sense of responsibility. Definitely that does grow. And I think that's a privilege to be able to feel that too. So what sort of shows have you been playing this year? I've been doing a lot of support shows, um, lots of band stuff. I've got Denny Ute coming up. I had the Taylor Swift um, Eras Tour sort of pre-entertainment before Sabrina, which was kind of wild. That was a fun couple of days. Right. Um, so yeah, lots of live shows this year, been kind of going here, there and everywhere. Denny Ute must have well. I used to say, well, in fact, I've said quite recently in interviews, I'm like, I'm slightly scared of that Ute muster. I don't know what's going on, but it sounds like it's quite a lovely time that it's a family show. Yeah. I'm sure it'd be crazy. I can't <laughs> wait. Have you played any other festivals kind of like that, that are not necessarily straight up music festivals, but attached to something else? Um, I did one up in the Hunter Valley, which was kind of like that as well, but most of them have just been straight music festivals. So this is going to be interesting, but I can't wait. Yeah. I am so excited. So excited. 
And uh, you mentioned that you'd had some band shows. So who is in your band? Yeah, so I've, when I have them, you know, in close proximity to the Central Coast, I have all Central Coast artists, which is just amazing. Um, Toby Wells, Bailey Graber, Lockie Ryside. So all Central Coast artists that are, um, you know, uh, session musicians. And then when I've been going to different places, I've kind of just, you know, picked people up here and there. Um, got a whole new band for Denny Ute for artists based in Melbourne. Um, so they are all from Darlinghurst. Okay. So we're sharing. <laughs> I'm just stealing them for a, for a set. Um, so that will be good. And yeah, just where I, I kind of just include people where I'm going, really, because you know sometimes also the fee you can't you know fly four people down to wherever you're going as well. Yeah. So I'm then then interested in the technical aspects of of rehearsing, like for Denny, because it's mm. not a band you usually work with. So do you, given that you it's it's a big outdoor festival do you actually try to book a space in town beforehand so you can rehearse how does it work yeah so pretty much have trusty dropbox um (laughs) and (laughs) upload absolutely everything onto there and then you know everyone can go through look listen look at the charts everything and then we've just booked a rehearsal space I think the day before so it'll be the day before the show that we're actually going to come together and um, I haven't, my drummer for this one is Ben Creamer and I've not even met him before. So we've only spoken online. So it'll yeah. be nice to actually meet them too. It will be, but also you're all professionals. So I do think there's that aspect of when people know what they're doing, you don't actually need that much rehearsal. No, I'm not, I'm not worried. It will be, I have complete trust in, in the people that are playing with me. So it will be so good. So you have the EP coming out, marking the end of the beginning, and you're heading into the studio to record some new music. So it sounds like brand new music is not that far away. No, it is not. It is much sooner than you think. Right. Um, <laughs> much sooner. So, yeah, this release and then possibly before Denny, we will have we will have the first single of this this new kind of chapter. So, yeah. Are you fun. actually going to press CDs of the EP to take to Denny? Yes, so um, I'm actually announcing it tomorrow night, but it's it's fine. We'll say it here. Well, I thought um, this will be posted in a, in a little while. <laughs> so um, I have, yeah, limited edition um, CDs coming in that are going to be numbered and signed. So it'll be interesting to see who gets in there first to get number one. But, um, yeah, they're all, they're all on the way. And I have merch on the way too. There's been some hold up with the shirts, but, like, they are coming so soon and I love the design on them. So I can't wait for you to see that too. Well, people can keep an eye, I'm sure, on your website for merch as well and they can catch you at Denny Ute Muster and a few other shows and in the meantime they can grab the EP online if they don't have the CD and the new music will come soon. And, Ella, I look forward to seeing what you do next. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. It's always lovely to chat with you. I appreciate it.